Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the last problem of today's weekly contest, construct string with minimum cost. The problem is very interesting. We will be discussing two different approaches in this problem. We will start with uh, a simple dynamic programming approach with hashing. And then we will briefly touch upon a solution using try as well, which uh, is being used by most of the submitted solution during the contest. I will assume that you know basic recursion as in if I can give you a recursive form function you know how to memoize it and make it a dynamic programming solution and I assume you know what hashing is. Again you don't need to understand hashing in detail uh, just about the basic knowledge of hashing what it is and why it is used for should be enough for this video. If you don't know about hashing or recursion there are other videos in this channel as well which you can watch to get a better understanding of those i would encourage you to watch those first and then come back here so that you can understand everything that is being taught here so with that let's get started the problem states that you're given a string target a array of string words and a integer array cost both words and cost are of same length you will start with the empty string s and you can perform the following operation any number of times the operation is you will choose the index i append words of i to s and the cost of this entire operation would be costs of i so you need to do this operation as many times as you want but your final goal is to make s equals to target in minimum possible cost and if it is not able if, if you are not able to make the string s equals to target no matter what operations we do we have to return minus one so let's take an example let's say these are the five words given to us and these are the cost of each of the word as in if you take this word you have to pay a cost of 100 similarly if you take abc you have to pay a cost of one and so on and so forth you have to make the final string a b c d e f so one of the way to approach this is you take first a b c at a cost of one then you take d which is again at a cost of one and then you take e f which is at a cost of five so a b c d e f and you will finally make the string a b c d e f at a total cost of 1 plus 1 plus 5 which is 7. No matter what operation you do differently, you will not be able to achieve a cost of less than 7 because any other string you choose, the cost of that itself would be greater than 7. So 7 is the best possible minimum cost in which you can make the given string equals to target and hence 7 is the answer. So let's take one more example. Let's say target is a, a a a and there are these three words with these three respective cost now you can notice here no matter what operation you do you will not be able to make a a a a from these words because there is no a at all in this word right so because you can't make the string target at all we have to return minus one in this scenario so hope the problem statement is clear now how to solve this so let's take a bigger example to understand this better. We have these words and cost. I have merged words and cost for better understanding. So this is a word with this cost. This is a word with this cost and so on and so on. And this is our final string which we need to make, right? Now you can see there are various possible choices here, right? You can take four A's at a cost of 101 then you can take again 4a at a cost of 101 to make this string and you will incur a total cost of 202 right similarly another way would be you take 5a at a cost of 100 and you take 3a at a cost of 50 and that will incur a cost of 150 right you can try out other possible combinations as well and among all these combinations you need to figure out the one with the minimum cost now 
how do you approach this in a brute force manner let's say you have to do it in the brute force manner what will be your first step basically you will try to simulate whatever you would do to calculate by hand right so we'll see okay let's see what is the first string that i will take so among these all which of the first string which we will take so let's ex uh, let's say you decide to take this string so in this case you'll say okay i have taken five a's already at a cost of 100 now i need to take these three a's from again the same list of string and give me the minimum cost in which i can do so isn't this problem sound like the original problem itself the original problem was given this entire string tell me what is the minimum cost to make this entire string from these set of words the reduced problem that we saw was uh, okay i have taken first string whatever first string i have taken i have taken now after taking the first string i am remaining with some string after that Tell me what is the minimum cost to make that string from the given set of words. So hope you can see the regression here. So what we can simply do is we can focus on what should be the first string. And once we have figured out the first string, the problem is exactly equal to the original problem itself. Right. So in this scenario, there can be multiple possible first string. For example, you can take this as a first string as well. In that case, you will be able to make all of these and then you have to solve for triple a only right or you can take this as the first string in that case you will take first 4a at a cost of 101 and you'll say what is the minimum cost to make the rest of the 4a or you can take this or this or this as well so because there are multiple ways you can try out all possible way and take the one which will give you the minimum possible result or minimum possible cost. So if we try to write this down formally using a function, let's say f denotes a function which takes in a string and tell us what is the minimum possible cost to make this string from the given set of words, right? Now we'll initially call this function for the entire string that is starting from 0 up to n minus 1. Now, what we will do? We will first focus on what is the first string I want to take. Let's say there are four or three possible choices. You will try out all possible choices. In other words, you will say, okay, I will try out first choice, which let's say has a cost of C1 and that C1 cost will take me x1 number of characters so i am remaining with let's say this is l right so c1 takes you x1 number of characters so let's say this is x1 so you have consumed these x1 characters now you are left with d string which in is equals to everything starting from l plus x1 right so basically for this remaining string tell me what is the minimum cost possible now similarly if you have some other choice and you can take another combination of first word that can cost you c2 you can try out and figure out what uh, you can try out c2 as well and see what is the minimum cost to make the remaining string and similarly for all other combinations as well now once you have figured out all of these the value of this path would be c1 plus whatever this will give you let's say x1 so c1 plus x1 is the value in this path if you go this path it is c2 plus x2 if you go this path let's say it's c3 plus x3 again x1 x2 x3 denotes uh, what is the minimum cost to make the string starting uh, string of these particular substring of the original string right now you can simply take minimum across all of these and that will be your final answer for f of sln which is uh, what is the minimum cost to make the string starting at index l and ending at index n
right now you can see um we don't need to maintain two different characters here or two different endpoints here because the last is always same so instead of uh, this the function can simply take one input which is what is the starting character and i can like we'll assume that we are talking about the entire string starting at that character and ending at end right so given this recursion we can solve this problem um we will get the minimum value of or minimum cost of making this entire string right and uh, if at any point of time you are not able to figure out the first matching string itself for example let's say the first character is x in that case you will not be able to figure out no matter which string you take you will not be able to figure out what is the first character in, a, in other words there is no path at all and in that case you can return some very large value or something of that sort that will denote that it is not possible to make the given string right so let's uh, look at the pseudo code before we jump further so the pseudo code would look something like this you will take a index ind on the function that basically denotes what is the minimum cost to make the string starting at ind up to the last character now if we have exhausted the entire string it means we have to make nothing and to make nothing you need zero cost so that's why you turn zero this is the memoization piece uh, which is pretty standard we'll come to that um, otherwise we will assume that answer is infinity and then we will try out every possible word that we have for each word we'll see if we can fit the word at the current index so starting at current index if the word is possible to be fit in this uh, starting at this index so let's say word is triple a and uh, index is uh, and you are trying to search for a b c d right so if word is triple a triple a is not matching a b so you can't fit triple a for a string starting at a b so you will simply continue and try out other possible words right so basically we are seeing whether this word can be can be fit starting at ind or not if it can be then it's a valid possible first choice so i will incur a cost of cost of j and simply say what is the cost to make the remaining string and if you add them up that is one possible alternative to make the complete string and you can simply take minimum across all such alternative to get the final answer right now because a one state can be computed more than once we need memorization here now if you are thinking about how uh, one simple example could be let's say you chose uh, let's forget about x and let's clean this up a bit so let's assume that you choose a a first so in that case you will see i need the value of f of 2 right now assume that instead of f and instead of a you have chosen a so in that case you would need a value of f of 1 right and again at f of 1 you decide to choose a again so in that case you will again need the value of f of 2 so notice you need f of 2 in this path and in one more path as well so basically instead of trying out f of 2 calculating f of 2 for all the path again and again you can simply store it up while you calculate it the, for the first time and return it as an answer simple memorization technique right now what is the overall time complexity of this entire algorithm because we are doing memorization it's sure that we will be computing one state exactly once that's it right so time complexity would simply be number of states multiplied by what we are doing inside each of the state right so how many states are there or rather how many different ways different unique ways this function f can be called number of dis distinct value of index which is n right so number of states is n multiplied by what we are doing inside each of the state so we are iterating over all the words right so that 
basically is uh, number of words right and then is that it the answer is no because we are also seeing whether the word matches everything starting at index ind so how you will do this let's say this is um, uh, index let's uh, add few more characters just to make it a bit more clear so this, let's say this is index i right and uh, you are trying to match a word a a a even though it doesn't match a a b to actually ensure that it is matching or not you have to iterate over it character by character so you start from index i you will start from index 0 of the word see if they are matching if it is matching you will continue for the next character if they are matching you will continue for the next character and so on and so forth until they mismatch or until they match fully right so this comparison here will also take the length of the word so basically w of l right so this is the overall time complexity of our algorithm right now if you think uh, if you look closely w of n multiplied w of l simply means uh, i am iterating over all the characters of all the words and it is given that all the characters of all the word is less than or equals to 5 into 10 power 4 and the number of the length of the target itself is 5 into 10 power 4 so complexity would simply be 5 into 10 power 4 multiplied by 5 into 10 power 4 which is uh, not sufficient to fit in the given time constraint so we need to optimize this now which of these things we can optimize easily notice this n is coming from the state so if you change the dp state itself that's a bigger process you need to rethink about your approach itself so let's first try and see if we can optimize this part or not if not we'll come back and see okay can we remove n or not that should be the thought process right so there are two loops here let's just uh, clean this a bit so there are two loops here wn and wl which uh, first one basically says we are iterating over all the words and second one says for each word we are iterating over all its characters right which basically will be as a part of this we haven't shown it here but it will be a part of this so which of these is easy to remove so wl is easy to remove why because you can simply do hashing notice wl you are consuming because you are comparing two strings here right and that's why you need to iterate over the string to make it uh, to make this comparison work but you do if you hash this entire thing and make it a number and compare that number instead then this comparison will just be order one and this wl will go away right so that's basically exactly what the first optimi first optimization is we can simply replace this comparison with a hash comparison we can compute the hash of all the words that is given to us offline and let's say you store it in this words hash array and for this part what you need you need hash of the word which start at index ind and end at the same length as this word that's that's where you will be doing uh, comparison of uh, the word that exists with the word that will be formed starting at index ind now this we know that we can do it efficiently we can simply iterate over all the words offline figure out their hash keep it with us right so this part is efficient now what about this we need hash of a sub array or sub string of the original string so for that you can simply apply prefix hash or prefix sum in, a, in other words you will see rolling hash and other things as well but it's simply prefix sum and you are taking a sum in a range and that is your hash so to understand this better let's uh, look at one simple hash function example again i am giving one example directly here 
uh, there are I think uh, two or three videos we have discussed hash functions in details. Uh, one of these is the one of them is this which I found uh, by searching. I will find other ones as well and try to link it here. Basically, there are multiple ways you can find hash function. Uh, the best hash function, or rather, you will try to optimize for collision. There should be, the minimum the collision, the better the hash function is. So one such hash function is this, which basically says, okay. I will, if I want to take a hash of string, I will iterate over all the indexes or all the characters, take that character multiplied by p power i, where i is the index and sum everything up to get the hash. Now, why this is better? Um, intuitively, you can see we are taking character into our account and we are taking position as well into our account. So because position and character both are taken in some form and it's not easy to like uh, come up with like intuitive examples to make sure that they collide it's a better hash function that's it right so in other words if you want to take a hash of this string what you will do you will simply do p power 1 multiplied by 1 because a is 1 p power 2 multiplied by 1 a is 1 p power 3 multiplied by 1 and so on and so forth and you will simply sum them all up to get the hash of this entire string. Now our goal is to find the hash of a substring of this string right and how to do that. Again you can see hash is nothing but a summation here right and if you want a summation of a substring you can simply use prefix sum. Right. So one of the approach you can do is uh, you can simply, um, sorry, uh, I think uh, you can simply take this entire thing and sum, uh, calculate the prefix sum and keep it with you. Right. So this will contain p, this will contain p plus p square, this will contain p plus p square plus p cube and so on and so forth. Now once you have calculated the prefix sum of this entire thing. If someone wants you to calculate the hash of a substring L2R, you can simply come to this prefix sum array and calculate the sum of a sub array here, right? Now you have calculated the sum, but this sum is not actually the hash of this string. Why? Because if you look at closely, the hash of the string would simply be P power one multiplied by character, which is one P power two multiplied by character, which is one p power 3 multiplied by character which is again 1 and p power 4 multiplied by character which is again 1. So the hash of this entire thing is will be p plus p square plus p cube plus p power 4. But if you take the sum of this entire thing you will get p cube plus p power 4 plus p power 5 plus p power 6 which is not equal to this for sure. So what's the difference? The difference is that everything here is multiplied by p square extra and why? Because this index started at L in the original string, but you want this to start at one when you are calculating the substring. So what you can do after you have calculated the prefix sum here, right? You will get some value X. Let's say you can simply divide it by P power L minus one, and that will be your final hash. So in this case, uh, L is three. You can simply divide it by P square. And if you divide it P square, you will see this value and this value are equal, right? So this is exactly how you calculate this hash of hash of index two index plus length minus one. Again, what we are doing, we are simply subtracting two numbers and dividing it by one number, which uh, you can do modular arithmetic to get this value efficiently. And this entire thing is order one. And this entire thing is already order one because you have computed that already. So overall, this entire comparison is order one. So the complexity now is n multiplied by w l, which basically means number of words you have, right? You have removed w n, which is sorry, w, it will be w n, which is number of words. You have removed w of l because you are now not iterating over each word inside this loop, right? Now, even though you remove W of L, the worst case complexity is still the same because even the worst case length of words is still 5 into the power 4, right? So 
we have improved a bit but the worst case is not fully improved so it's the right time to pause and try to think how to improve this we can uh reduce this loop as well not remove reduce this loop as well using a very simple property notice this length and uh, think about it i would encourage you to pause for maybe five minutes and think for yourself so the crux here is we are calculating the hash of one length multiple times right if let's say there are five words of length five you will be computing the hash of those five words here uh, so you will computing the hash of those five words and comparing it with the hash that with the same hash value right now because the lhs is fixed for a particular length it doesn't matter what rhs you compare with it will match it will either match with one of the various length of words or it will not match with anything right so if there is a length l like if there is a word if there are like several words with length l you can simply compute the hash of length l here and see if any of the words with which you have has that hash or not if it has then it's fine you will go ahead otherwise you will not now what's the difference the difference is you are not iterating over all the words rather you are iterating over all the unique length of words that you have right and that simple change improved the time complexity a lot why think about how many unique lengths you can have in this entire string the number of unique length could be root of total sum of all the characters so total sum of all the characters is 5 to the power 4 so number of lengths or number of unique lengths that you can have is at max root of sum of all the characters why because let's say you have a string of length 1 and then the next unique length could be a string of length 2 again it can be greater but if it is greater then we will be having lesser length so we are trying to compute the worst case complexity so it's better if you take a string of length 1 and then a string of length 2 and then another string of length 3 another string of length 4 and so on and so forth until we hit our uh, 50000 uh, number right now what's the value the, what is this value let's say it, it goes up to k so this entire thing is k into k plus 1 by 2 which is approximately k square right so k square is equals to this and if you do if you do k k is root 50k which like is roughly around 250 or something so this entire thing is around 250 like this k is 250 so basically number of unique lengths that you can have is at max 250 in the worst case so this uh, l number of unique lengths is 250 so the complexity is order n into unique length which is 250 and this is sufficient to pass the given time constraint right this from this we got to this with one simple trick that is we are now iterating over all the unique lengths rather than all the words and nothing else is changing now one small thing that changes is uh, like you will not have a particular hash here rather you will maintain it in some some set or map or something and you compare those two values directly right so that's the only change nothing else changes here and the complexity is now order n into unique length now if anything is not clear to this point I highly encourage you to pause rewind and watch the section which is not clear all the timestamps will be there in the description down below so that you can jump back and forth in the section of choice so now that we understood this n into u l complexity I would encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself first before jumping forward. Now there can be two things that you need to know. First is uh, how to compute this hash. This we have this we have discussed in this video itself that uh, hash is nothing but you can just take this function and apply it, and that you, that will give you the hash. And second thing that we have, that we haven't seen here is uh, 
uh, this words hash of j would no longer be words hash of j rather because we are iterating over all the unique lengths here we have to now search for the current hash in a set or a map right so would encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself before jumping to the code next we're looking at the code the code is exactly what we discussed it's a little bit longer uh, we'll discuss why it is and uh, we'll discuss uh, why the worst case is still the the one that we talked about so first of all there are few global variables which uh, i have computed so let's keep that aside after that we simply hash this target string with a function hash it so there is a function hash it we'll come to that but that function basically takes this entire string and compute a prefix array for the hash basically this will come return this particular array right and this value of this array will compute will, will contain the entire hash because this value will contain the sum of everything which is the hash of the complete string itself right so we have the hash the prefix hash here now after that we simply figured out uh, what is the unique words we have again uh, this max word length i think this is of no use uh, i have taken it for some other purpose but not required now uh, after that once we figure out all the word lengths that we have uh, we will simply push that into unique word lengths which is nothing but a vector here right now once we have uh, all the unique lengths with us we can start the recursion but one small thing as well we need to have the hash of all the strings so that whenever we have a hash h we can see which whether it is matching any of the hash or not so for that we computed we iterated over all the words for each word we computed the hash again with the hash it function and remember the last value will contain the hash of the entire string so here we need the hash of the entire string we don't care about each of the vectors so we simply did that after that um, we have pushed that into an array which is cost per string which is sorry a map which is the first thing will contain the hash and second thing will contain the what is the cost now notice there can be multiple string which is exactly same but the cost is different so for to tackle that condition we have said that okay we'll assign hash to this cost i only if it doesn't exist if hash already exists we will take it minimum with the existing hash now notice this entire thing is with the assumption that there is no collision if there is collision this will not work and if there is collision there is other things as well which will not work so for now let's not worry about collision because that will be rare if you have taken uh, hash function smartly even if this is a hash function there can be collision possible in that case you can augment your hash function with one more hash function so let's say you have you have picked a prime number ps31 here you can try out and figure out another hash function h2 let's say with let's say 37 right and instead of just one hash you can maintain a pair of hash and see and say okay if both of the hash matches then only my string will be considered equal otherwise they will not so basically you reduced the possibility of collision exponentially by doing this right so for now assume there is no collision so this entire thing will work as expected and this cost per string will contain what is the minimum cost for a particular hashed string now once we have all of these we will simply call this function min cost which will return us the minimum cost which is nothing but the function f here right now this min cost is exactly what we have seen this video code for uh, if it is the last index we will turn zero we will look at the dp array if it is existing we will return it otherwise we will compute it for computation we will iterate over all the unique lengths figure out the hash of that length for the current substring and figure out whether there is a matching substring for that hash or not if there is no matching substring which matches with existing word will continue basically there is no other choice for this length which is matches which is match which matches with one of the given words we have if it matches with one of the given words we know what is the minimum cost of that word 
and uh, we'll simply take that and find out the minimum cost to make the remaining string from the given set of words. So this entire thing uh, will run into number of unique values here, which is n multiplied by number of unique lengths, which is root of w sum, right? Now let's look at other functions again. Uh, if this return infinity, it means uh, there is no way to make the string. We'll simply return minus one here, right? Simple. Now let's look at other functions as well. Um, let's start with the uh, hash it which basically does one small thing uh, it iterates over all the characters here figure out p power i and multiply it with the current character and take the modulus n so this is the hash of the current character at the current position we'll simply add it with the previous uh, computed ruling hash or the prefix sum to get the value at the current index and we simply return that, right? Simple prefix sum. Now, this compute power is a simple computation. So we'll come to this first. Let's uh, look at this function again. If you look at this, we are calling this hash of range to compute the hash of a given range. And in this hash of range, we are simply doing um, prefix sum kind of approach. Prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of L minus one. We'll do plus one as well because uh, this minus can make this entire thing negative because everything is mod M. So we'll simply do plus m and mod m. This will give us the hash. Now notice this hash will not be the actual hash because this hash will be the hash if the string has started from index L. But this string will be starting from index 1 if you take it independently. So you have to return, you have to like uh, divide it by p power L minus 1 as well. So we have computed the inverse p power beforehand and we simply multiply it and take modulus m to get the answer. Now. Finally, we have two things, inverse p power and p power that is computed in power. p power is simple, uh, p power i is equals to p power i minus one multiplied by p. So p power i is equals to p power i minus one multiplied by p. And inverse p power is uh, p power n minus one, uh, sorry, one by p power n minus one is equals to or rather this modulus m you can apply permissibility theorem if m and this are uh, co prime to each other if mm co so in this case m m pre will be co prime to each other because p itself is prime and m is also prime so they will surely be co prime to each other unless they are equal which in this case it is not so we can use permissibility theorem and the value of this entire thing would simply be um, p power n minus 1 power m minus 2 modulus m right so you can like look up for permit Lee theorem we have discussed that theorem multiple times in channel as well i can link one of the videos as well but this is the value so what we do we simply figure out the power uh, using fast power uh, algorithm which uh, simply figure out the power a power b modulus m efficiently because you can't iterate over n minus one multiplied by m minus two here because m is very huge here. m is 10 power nine plus one, nine. So uh, you can't iterate over and multiply this uh, that many times. So you need to use something efficient and the fast power is that. It basically tries to uh, leverage the fact that uh, you can represent the any value in this binary format and if you do this there will be only log n number of terms which you can figure out efficiently so that's fast power also we have discussed multiple times in this channel so i will not go into details for that you can look up that and we'll, i can link one of the videos as well now finally uh, once you have figured out the power the value of 1 by p power n minus 1 1 by p power n minus 2 would simply be 1 by 1 by p power n minus 1 multiplied by p right so that's what we did uh, inverse p power i would simply be inverse p power i plus one multiplied by p modulus m right so this entire thing gives us inverse p power and p power and rest of the things we have discussed how to uh, get the values over now important thing is uh, this exact algorithm is not passing with set uh, with map uh, with uh, set there was some uh, more test cases passing but uh, not all with 
that as well but the complexity is exactly what we discussed there is no harm here notice that we have done continue here and even if you do continue there is no issues here because this lookup is just order one with unordered map and this hash is also order one right so this is not passing but there were various solutions in the contest uh, i think uh, i have seen the top 10 solution at least that was there in the contest and all of them was using try in a non-efficient way again there is a solution with try but at least the solutions which were accepted during the contest were using try in a non-efficient way one of the solution was this which was using try um, and i tried like that basically is a non-optimal solution because if you try this entire thing entire solution on this particular test case which is basically all the a's and then you have just four words or let's it can work with three or two words as well but i just have made four words because uh, i want to make this uh, fail so if you have four words here uh, each with a different length and all a's only and the length would be n by 4 minus i and each with same cost as well so if you run this entire thing this algorithm is uh, uh, taking longer time than the algorithm that we discussed and that's obvious because this algorithm is not fully efficient it's still order n square beneath so this was passing but that solution was not passing which is uh, really sad i have uh, raised uh, or contributed a test case like this uh, but it hasn't been accepted as of now i am hopeful that it will be accepted and some of these solutions will go away but irrespective of this let's try to discuss one try solution if you are interested um, we'll see two versions one how uh, folks have approached this in the contest which was passing and which should not be we'll discuss why it should not be and then we'll somehow try to discuss if what could be done to make it pass um again i haven't uh, prepared this much so let's see let's say this is your given given set of words uh for better understanding i have removed the last word from here let's say you build the try by yourself again i assume you know what try is um, so we have built the try and uh, each of the ending node you put the value so you have five a's so after five a you put 100 you have four a's after four a's you put 101 you have two a three a's you put 50 or three a's you have one two a you put 155 at two a now you need to make this string only so what you will do is uh, again the concept is exactly same nothing changes in the concept it's still that you try to figure out the first word first once you have figured out the first word you just uh, uh call or recursively figure out the rest of the word as well right the only thing that changes here is uh, instead of figuring out the value for everything you are now saying that okay i want to find out value for this string only nothing else so instead of suffix we are now jumping to prefix for better uh, understanding so what we are saying is this value here will denote what is the minimum cost to create this entire string similarly this value here would not what is the minimum cost to create this entire string and so on and so forth now you'll start with here because you want to calculate this you would need all of these to be computed so you will start with the first one you will see what is the minimum cost to make this a initially all of these would be infinity right because you don't know whether there's a matching string or not so you start with this you say okay what is the minimum cost to make this a what you do you start iterating over the try and start matching the characters until you can and once uh, you have matched some characters you can compute that value and figure out the rest from this db array itself right now if you do this entire thing notice what you are doing for each so okay let's take one example first we will be, before we jump into the time complexity part let's say you want to compute you start with here right now at this point you said okay what all things are matching so you start from here 
you said okay this a a is matching again a is not matching because a at a there is no ending string but at a, a there is an ending string 155 so this is matching so you can say okay this entire thing is 155 and everything before is given by this value which is zero currently so you can say this entire thing is can be made in 125 as well so what's the current value current value is infinity is infinity is greater than 125 answer is yes so let's update it to 155 right in the same fashion you will continue forward moving forward and you will see okay this is also matching again this you will do this until this things matches so a, a, a is matching here so 50 so this entire thing can be made with 50 everything before can be made with zero so this entire thing can be made with 50 itself so 50 is greater than smaller than infinity so you can update the value here and so on and so forth now let's take uh, this example now let's say you are you you now are starting with uh, this string you have completed the, you have done this exercise for this one and this one before now you are starting with this string so you can what you can do you can simply say okay what are my matching strings you can say this is the first matching string so i can say okay this this entire thing can be made with uh, 155 everything before can be made with 155 as well so this entire thing can be made with 310 so you can update this value to 310 assuming that it was infinity before right and so on and so forth so you keep on doing this for each after you have done this for entire character you will have the value which is the minimum cost for each character uh, for each prefix and you'll simply take this value to get the answer right now what is the time complexity time complexity is you are doing something for each index so you are doing something for n times now what you're doing you are keep you're matching this entire thing with all those uh, with all the matching strings that you have in other words you are doing this exact thing but in a bit efficient manner because you are using try right so you are not iterating over so rather i think you are doing this entire thing only but you are not iterating over everything here rather you are doing this uh, in a bit efficient manner by using try and uh, with that you are able to reduce the complexity a bit and that the test cases are uh, weak in that direction so this solution passes but effectively what you are doing for each string if let's say there is a string with uh, uh, this this many length n by 4 plus 1 and everything up till n by 4 is matches but after that is it is matches that is it is b so for each character you will be matching n by 4 characters for sure and after that you will come to know that there is no match so for each character you will be doing n by 4 matches so for everything you will be doing n by 4 matches if there is such string so the worst case complexity is still order n square which should not pass the given time constraint but sadly it, it was passing so how to optimize this one way of optimizing this could be to compress the try itself but that is very hard uh, you can't do it very easily so that's where this solution is a bit harder than the solution we discussed using hash. That is much easier to understand and code as well. Uh, not code, I think code, coding where coding wise this might be easier, but depending on how you are able to compress the try as well. Uh, because at the end, if you want to optimize this, instead of iterating over the length uh, of over the entire string, you would iterate over the length of the string because that's something which is bounded by root of w s not the length right so that is the difference and to do that you have to somehow optimize like compress this try so that you can only look at what you wanted right so hope this entire thing is clear if you have any doubts in any of the approaches feel free to post them in the comments below i would be happy to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already also, uh, as I mentioned, this solution is not passing. I will link the solution in the description down below. You can take it and I'm very happy if you can point out some mistakes here or you can make it work. Also, if uh, you think uh, I'm missing something in the try solution, feel free to po point that as well. Uh, I would be happy to learn uh, 
about what i am missing in this part uh, because there are more like almost more like in the first page or first two pages i think there are very very resolution which is different than this at least i have seen all the c++ versions so i didn't find why it should pass except the fact that the time complexity itself is, sorry the test case itself is an issue but uh, i might be wrong there so feel free to point that and uh, we can uh, i can like create a follow up video about the current understanding as well so with that we'll end the video here uh, if you like uh, do share it with your friends so that they can also learn something from the video i will post uh, uh, two or three related videos with hashing in the description below you can watch these those videos as well that will help you understand um, how beautiful or how powerful hashing in general is so with that we'll end i will see you in the next one thank you